फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल फूड रिच इन विटामिन बी ट्वेल्व वी मस्ट हैव टू कंज्यूम वंस वी एड द फूड विच हैविंग द हाई लेवल ऑफ द विटामिन बी ट्वेल्व विटामिन बी ट्वेल्व एंटर इन टू द स्टमक हियर इन साइड द स्टमक पराइटल सेल सीक्रेट इंट्रेंसिक फैक्टर विच इज नेसेसरी और इट इज मस्ट रिक्वायर फॉर द एब्सोपन ऑफ विटामिन बी ट्वेल्व इन साइड द स्टमक देर इज ऑल्सो वन आर प्रोटीन इज प्रेजेंट but here what will happen vitamin b12 having the high affinity for the r protein so here inside the stomach vitamin b12 binds with the r protein rather than that of the intrinsic factor now this r protein and vitamin b12 complex enter into the intestine inside the intestine there is a presence of pancreatic proteases which cleaves the bond between vitamin b12 and r protein so vitamin b12 has been released from the r protein now this vitamin b12 binds with the intrinsic factor which is already released from the parietal cells of the stomach and it is also present inside the intestine which is directly coming from the stomach all right intrinsic factor is synthesized from the parietal cell of the stomach please remember now once the vitamin b12 an intrinsic factor complex has been formed it is traveling from the duodenum jejunum and the terminal ileum where it comes in contact with the brush border of the enterocyte enterocyte are the cells of the intestinal mucosa and on the lumen or the internal lumens they having the brush border where this vitamin b12 and intrinsic factor complex binds and there is a some type of uh, event just like the endocytosis has been takes place and this intrinsic factor and vitamin b12 enter into the enterocyte here the intrinsic factor and vitamin b12 has been separated and vitamin b12 binds with the transcobalamin 2 for the transportation as well as the absorption of vitamin b12 the binding of vitamin b12 with the transcobalamin 2 is necessary now this transcobalamin 2 and vitamin b12 release into the blood vessels and uh, it reaches to the liver where inside the liver the transcobalamin has been released from the vitamin b12 and vitamin b12 binds with the transcobalamin 1 and inside the liver vitamin b12 is stored as a complex with the transcobalamin 1 so simply vitamin b12 and transcobalamin 1 has been stored inside the liver as a complex all right so this is the absorption part of the vitamin b12 now what is the uses of vitamin b12 inside our body so metabolic pathway showing interaction of vitamin b12 and folate in the synthesis of dna for deoxyribonucleic acid so polyglutamates inside the food and it is converted to monoglutamates now this monoglutamates converted to plasma methyl tetrahydrofolate in the presence of vitamin b12 homocysteine is converted to methionine and during this event this plasma methyl tetrahydrofolate is also converted to tetrahydrofolate this step requires vitamin b12 without vitamin b12 this step is cannot occur all right so this tetrahydrofolate now converted to formyl tetrahydrofolate or it is also known as folinic acid or this folinic acid or formyl tetrahydrofolate now converted to 510 methylene tetrahydrofolate this event also converts uridine monophosphate to dithymidine monophosphate and this dithymidine monophosphate is necessary for the synthesis of dna or simply it is the must for the synthesis of dna now this 510 methylene tetrahydrofolate is converted to dihydrofolate due to this reaction and uh, this dihydrofolate converted to formyl tetrahydrofolate or folinic acid via dihydroreductase enzyme without vitamin b12 this step is not occurring and due to failure of this step here dithymidine monophosphate cannot be formed and dna formation has been hampered now what will happen inside the pathology of the vitamin b12 why there is a deficiency status of the vitamin b12 is present 
first thing the person fail to consume the food which having the high level of vitamin b12 so deficiency of the vitamin b12 in the food it is known as nutritional deficiency of vitamin b12 that is the first thing now the second thing due to some type of abnormality related to the parietal cell so that parietal cell is not able to synthesis and secrete intrinsic factor and that's why there is a decreased or reduced absorption of vitamin b12 from the terminal ileum so that vitamin b12 deficiency occurs in the third part this a uh, absorption of the vitamin b12 is not possible due to some type of abnormality in the mucosa of the terminal ileum so these three are the main site due to which there is a deficiency of the vitamin b12 atrophic gastritis it is the chronic inflammation of the stomach lining which may also leads to gastrointestinal bleeding now which are the causes of atrophic gastritis there are two causes one ansed drug use and second helicobacter pylori infection which are the ansed drugs or the non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs aspirin ibuprofen diclofenac and indomethacin atrophic gastritis is one of the cause behind pernicious anemia where deficiency of intrinsic factor from the parietal cells of the stomach so atrophic gastritis in our case the patient is using ansed on a chronic basis and due to this chronic use of ansed the patient is suffering from atrophic gastritis due to this atrophic gastritis there is a damage to the parietal cells of the stomach so that parietal cell is not able to do their normal function or the release of the intrinsic factor from the parietal cell has been reduced hence there is a decreased absorption of vitamin b12 from the intestine and hence the patient is suffering from pernicious anemia deficiency of vitamin b12 causes anemia called pernicious anemia it is a type of megaloblastic anemia why vitamin b12 deficiency called anemia or simply pernicious anemia for the synthesis of red blood cells adequate stores of iron amino acids and vitamin b6 and b12 are necessary vitamin b12 is a water soluble vitamin and it's uh, isn't produced by our body so it must be component of diet and absorbed through the gastrointestinal system once it is absorbed our body or liver stores vitamin b12 for up to 3 years of the use animal origin foods are main source of vitamin b12 hence vitamin b12 deficiency mainly found in people who are on vegetarian diet or vegan diet and uh, they are avoiding all animal products all right vitamin b12 is also known as cyanocobalamin and it's uh, essential for maturation of red cells daily requirement of vitamin b12 in adult is 1 to 2 microgram it is also called anti pernicious factor as it deficiency causes pernicious anemia vitamin b12 is required for synthesis of dna and maturation of nucleus as well as cell vitamin b12 deficiency leads to maturation of the nucleus has been failed cell size increased hence it is known as megaloblast and become more fragile reduction in the cell division so these all are the side effects of the vitamin b12 deficiency many of you are confused with the word megaloblast in the megaloblastic anemia and the most common cause of this megaloblastic anemia is due to vitamin b12 and folic acid deficiency megaloblastic anemia is a anemia of macrocytic classification that results from inhibition of dna synthesis during red blood cell production when dna synthesis is impaired cell cycle cannot progress from the g2 growth stage to the mitosis m stage this leads to continuing cell growth without division which presents as macrocytosis the pathological stage of megaloblastosis is characterized by many large immature and dysfunctional red blood cells so here the size of the red blood cell has been increased that's why they are known as megaloblasts in the bone marrow and also by hypersegmented neutrophils 
so here in the pathological stage of megaloblastosis which is characterized by many large immature and dysfunctional red blood cells which are known as megaloblast in the bone marrow and uh, also we are going to find the hypersegmented neutrophil what do you mean by hypersegmented neutrophils which are defined as the presence of neutrophils with six or more lobes or the presence of more than three percentage of neutrophils with at least five lobes these hypersegmented neutrophils can be detected in a peripheral blood using a diagnostic smear of a blood sample so here in this picture both the findings you are going to confirm that the RBCs are megaloblast so the size of the RBC has been increased and these are the immature and dysfunctional plus hypersegmented neutrophils so these are the neutrophils which are hypersegmented and these all are the RBCs